You're listening to the Vocabit Podcast, where I help students improve their vocabulary for the SAT, ACT, and life itself using my unique and research-backed story-based method. On this podcast, I'm sharing the best tips and tricks for a more enriched vocabulary and pain-free test day. Hello, and welcome to episode 69 of the Vocabit Podcast. I'm Erica Abbott, a former English and history teacher, the author of the young adult novel Ahead of Her Time, and the founder of the eponymously named vocabulary company, Vocabit. I don't remember the first time I heard the word kudos, but I do remember thinking that it was kind of a trendy generational word. I thought it was maybe 1970s slang, like ditto. I was wrong on both counts. Neither kudos nor ditto are trendy, recently made up slang. But I only found out last week that kudos has been around basically unchanged since the time of Homer. In ancient Greece, kudos was magical glory granted by the gods. So if someone says kudos, that was amazing. What they were originally saying was, man, the gods blessed you with magical glory. That was amazing. Now we've dropped the magical glory and interesting bits from this word. We just think of it as congratulations, but it was originally far more interesting. When you start talking about etymology, the struggle between a word's original meaning and what it's evolved into is always present. I personally take the view that languages evolve, and I'm fine letting them do that. But knowing the original meaning of a word adds a layer of depth to your word choice, enhancing your understanding of life and history. It's fine to embrace both sides. With the word kudos, over the past hundred years or so, there has been a fierce debate among linguists, something I'd love to see in person. You see, back in the day, well-educated people tended to have a working knowledge of Greek and Latin. But today, very few high schools offer Greek. Some don't even offer Latin. So our knowledge of where this word came from has diminished. If you studied Greek, something I didn't do, so I'm not judging, I'm just imparting this tidbit from the linguists, but if you'd studied Greek, Apparently you'd know that kudos is a singular word, but we ignoramuses today see the S at the end and assume it's plural. So when we want to talk about one of these compliments or magical glory congratulations, we say things like, I was getting one kudo after another. This word, kudo, makes some linguists want to howl at the moon. The online etymology dictionary calls it a barbarous back formation. I'm not sure where I am on the scale of letting this particular word evolve. A good comparison would be the word news if in the future people thought, oh, news is plural, so I'm reading one article, I'm reading the new. You'd be like, no, you're, you're still reading the news. It's not the new if it's one paper or one article. I get that that would be annoying and I get that that would feel wrong. But at the same time, if you don't let these languages evolve, you know, Italian, French, Spanish, all of these are just kind of evolved Latin. People take words, mix them with their own, simplify them for their own understanding. That's just what happens with language. There's a word where I used to actually be really bad about this. It used to bug the heck out of me because I heard it every single day. At the school where I used to work, there was a panini machine. That's amazing. The kids can make their own sandwiches. That's awesome. The problem was panini in Italian is plural. Panini means sandwiches. If you have one sandwich, it's a panino. But every single thing that came out of that machine was a panini, a sandwiches. But eventually I just decided this is America. It's a different language. We borrowed this word and adapted it just like Italian is basically adapted Latin. If you pick the earliest form of a word and refuse to let it change, Joe Biden was speaking from the beak of a bird last week. If you listen to the last episode, you'll know what I'm talking about. We have to let words evolve. And if you look at an English dictionary, the entry for panini already says, a sandwich made with Italian bread, usually toasted. It's a tricky business deciding what to allow and what's just grammatically incorrect. All right, on that note, I'll see you guys next week.